car seats. The car seats. The child should sit in the rear facing car seat until how old? One. Two. Two. That is new guidelines. There's even newer guidelines, but they won't kick into play until another year. Uh, but for right now, rear facing car seat till they're two. It needs to be in the center of the back seat. This baby is in the rear facing car seat till they're two in the center of the back seat. When they are two, they can turn to forward facing car seat. And when they become 68 pounds, four feet, and until they get four feet, nine inches, so forward facing baby car seat, when they become 68 pounds, and four feet nine inches they can go in a booster a booster when can they sit in the front seat 13 tell them teenager teen 13 goes in the front seat what happens with these children who are now dead i might add when they sit in the front seat airbag will kill them every time and the er's are so sick of it please keep your freaking kid out of the front seat they do not go in the front seat until they're 13, okay? So you gotta know this, all right? Now, SIDS, right, SIDS? Oh, let me say this. I think I said it, but I don't remember. What did I say about three-year-olds? How many pounds are they? And how many inches are they? This is a very rough, very rough estimate just to help you on some of the questions and get this. They go up by two to three pounds and two to three inches every year. <coughs> three, 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 three. Remember that. Three, 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 three. Rule of threes. 33 pounds, 33 inches, three years old, three inches and three pounds every year. Roughly. Okay, I'm trying to hook you up. Now, the, the, the SIDS, right? Save the best for last, right? Okay, so let's do SIDS. When it comes to SIDS, what's the other name for that? I didn't ask you what SIDS stood for. I should have the other name for it. Crib death, right? The peak of SIDS is zero to four months old. So as we finish this lecture, it's zero to four months old for the peak. It can happen anywhere from zero to one year of age. What is the number one risk factor for SIDS? There is a smoker in the home, correct? Okay, now here's how that makes sense. We did a study. Mom, pregnant. Never smoked. Never. But what did she do? She lived with the smoker. In our research, and I participated in this research, in my practice, you didn't qualify for the study unless you never smoke, but you live with a smoker. Maybe a man smoke. Maybe your grandma smoke if you're a teenager. Maybe a mom and them smoke. Whoever it is you live with, they smoke. As you live with this person pregnant, we followed you through the entire time until this kid was literally 10 years old. This mother at delivery, when I delivered this patient who was enrolled in the study, I had to make sure that after I delivered the baby's head, my assistant took a snippet, literally I cut a snippet of hair, and thankfully the hair back here, even Baldy Locks babies have hair right back here. So we just cut a real quick snippet of hair, gave it to the assistant to run to the lab. We had to do it that way because once I delivered the baby's chest, they take a deep breath. If they take a deep breath, the sample was contaminated. So I had to get the hair before they took the deep breath. So I'm delivering the baby's head. I get the hair sample, give it to the assistant, deliver the rest of the baby, they cry, they take their deep breath. 
When we analyzed that baby's hair of the mother who never smoked, we saw nicotine, tar, cancer-causing carcinogens in the hair of that precious child. How did it get there? Because for nine months, she breathed in secondhand smoke, filtered it through her body, respiratory system first, because it's coming through her mouth and her nose, it also filtered through her digestive system. She filtered this through her bloodstream, her bloodstream through her uterus feeds her baby's placenta. This blood, tar, nicotine, cancer causing carcinogens went straight to her baby. And when you think about how the baby is inside of you, this is the uterus, mommy's tummy, uterus. This is the baby's placenta, real attached to her uterus. The cord is coming off the placenta and whatever mom sends to the placenta is going through the cord to the baby. When the baby gets this blood with nicotine, tar, and cancer causing carcinogens, it filters it through their body, this newborn, I mean this fetus inside of mommy, and then it filters all the way through. It becomes obviously a drug the liver needs to metabolize. And when it does, it sends the waste product out through the kidneys. This baby pees. And what is amniotic fluid? Sterile baby pee. But in this baby's case, this amniotic fluid is sterile baby pee with cancer causing carcinogens, tar, and nicotine. She never smoked. Secondhand smoke. When I teach my patients this, I make sure their husband, their mother, their grandmother, and whoever else smokes, I make sure I repeat it for their purposes. You know why? Because I have found when people know why, then they comply. And what I have found is that this husband will quit. This mother of this patient will quit. If they don't quit, they at least never smoke again in the house. Why? Because part two of this story, after the baby's born, is that when you smoke a cigarette, the smoke does not disappear. I know you don't see it, but it's in there because you learned in seventh grade, matter is neither created nor is matter ever destroyed. So that matter, that smoke, is somewhere. Where is it? In the carpet, in the drapes on the upholstery, on the car seat when you smoke in the car, on the baby's linen that you wash getting ready for a newborn. It's every freaking where. So when you bring this baby home, they have, we know because we follow them, they already have a hard enough time because they were low birth weight. They were premature. You know, she never smoked with this one she got. Preemies, low birth weight. They come home. What do they get? Upper respiratory infections right away. What else? Strep throat. What else? Asthma. What else? Sinusitis. She never smoked, but that's what they get. Why? Because when you're around smoke, it lowers your immune system. So let's just play it all the way out, shall we? The smoke is everywhere. You brought a compromised baby home who was compromising the fetus from a mother who never smoked but was exposed to secondhand smoke. Now you brought this newborn home. You lay them on their beautiful new bedding. You don't know any better because you never learned any better and no one ever taught you any better because your nurse is on some bullshit on Facebook while you were a patient. So when you came home, you had no freaking idea that the bed should have nothing in it, not a pillow, not a blanket, not a teddy bear, nothing in it, and that you should be laying your baby on their back to sleep. In fact, when she gets home, she lives with her mother, you know, the smoking mom, and the mother says, because she means well, and she's my age, no, you probably didn't understand the nurses. You don't lay no damn baby on their back. They don't choke. Lay them on their stomach. Raise your hand if you were taught that. Me, you, you, and you. Older women were taught, lay your baby on their stomach so they don't choke. That is no longer true and hasn't been for about 20 years. So when this mother brings her baby home, we have now figured out through research, she needs to lay her baby on the back to sleep. There needs to be nothing in the crib. The baby needs to be put in a sleep sack instead of some crazy bulky pajamas. Sleep sack, don't forget that. The baby needs to be in her room for the first four to six months, not in her bed, that's crazy as hell. 
because the little cousin that I had was dead now because the mother who slept with them rolled on them. Not in your bed. Many of us human beings in this room have fallen asleep with our baby breastfeeding and was shocked to find them up under our chest over here some damn where. Happens a lot. Many of us know that if we're realistic and honest. So you're not gonna sleep with this baby. This baby is about to sleep in your room because you will be more alert to them choking or whatever else when they're in your room for the first four to six months. So this baby needs to sleep on their back because if you bring this compromised child home, didn't we just all agree that head lag after four months is a problem? But I just told you SIDS is between zero and four months. That's the peak. You could go all the way to a year with it. But the peak, when do babies die? Before they get their head control. So how does that work, Shelly? Well, let's see. This baby, you put them, because you didn't know no better, in a bed with bumper pads, blankets, cute little pillow you got at the baby shower. You laid them down the way your mama told you on their stomach. Because they are compromised and not as mature and healthy as other babies with no smoker in the house, when they are in their bed moving the way all newborns do, they don't have the ability to do this. Instead, they do this slightly, turn into that smoke-filled, tar, nicotine-laced blanket, pajamas, pillow, toys, whatever the hell, and they can't get out. And that's how they die, and that's how we find more customers. What you want to remember is back to sleep. You want to remember that a pacifier protects this baby. Because when they suck, they got to swallow. When they swallow, their airway stays clear. You want to remember that their nose is so damn small that if they get a cold, they can die because they can't breathe out of their mouth. So you want to make sure that you teach mommies with babies that have a cold to put saline in their noses at night and to keep that bulb suction available and to make sure they suction what part of the body first, the mouth or the nose? Mouth first, nose last. Bulb suction. They are obligate nose breathers. They can't breathe out of their mouth if they wanted to. Look at how tiny a baby's nose is. I want you to pay attention to that. Get a humidifier in that room. These babies need it. They already, what, too tiny, premature, so the head lag issue is gonna take longer than most because most babies control the head by eight to 10 weeks. It's a referral by four months, but most kids got it together by eight to 10 weeks. Upper respiratory infection, all this shit is gonna be more pronounced in this child how do we know? Because we studied this shit for 10 years. Have a good day. Bye.